Our housing market has drastically changed over the last two weeks. So today we're gonna to do a mid-quarter review. I'm gonna share some important insight to help you be successful as a buyer or seller in Solano County's market. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe. I'm a realtor in the Bay Area and I specialize in Solano County. Well, it sure took a while, but our spring market is finally here and there's been an incredible increase in buyer activity despite the higher interest rates. I'm gonna share some detailed insight and some nuances that you need to pay attention to in order to be successful in today's market. Number one, return of multiple offers. Yes, we are back in a market where several houses are receiving multiple offers, but it's important to talk about the distinctions between this market and what we've seen over the last couple years. When we say multiple offers today, we're talking about three offers, possibly five for a very popular house. And that house is usually one that's very turnkey, move-in ready, it has a unique characteristic or something that makes it stand out from the rest of the crowd. Not all houses are getting multiple offers. And that's a huge difference between the last two years. It's seen that regardless of how a house presented and regardless of its issues, buyers were throwing money at the properties. That's not the case this year. As we've discussed, buyers are scrutinizing properties more closely this year because it's more expensive to borrow money. They need something that's gonna fit their lifestyle, that's gonna be more affordable, and they are being more particular about what houses they're willing to make an offer on. Sellers really have to emphasize how they present their houses, which again is very different from the last two years. They need to declutter, depersonalize, at least lightly stage, and try to market their properties and showcase it to the best of their ability in the hopes of receiving multiple offers. That brings me to my second point of insight, which is a better balance of power between buyers and sellers. Now let me be clear, it's absolutely still a seller's market. And that's predominantly due to the fact that we only have one month's worth of housing inventory. A neutral market where there's a balanced power between buyer and seller has a six month supply of housing inventory. So we have incredibly low inventory and because of supply and demand that automatically makes it a seller's market. However, we're just coming off of a market where the last six to eight months was very challenging for sellers to sell their properties. They weren't commanding over list price. They were having to give concessions such as seller credit to help buy down the rate. And many sellers actually took their properties off market in the hopes that the market would improve and they could command a higher price point today. Well, that is happening, but sellers are carrying some residual feelings about the last six months. They're aware that the market is still volatile and more than a sky high price point, they're gonna be looking for a solid buyer that can actually close on their properties. So they're gonna be looking at the overall terms and package. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna command significantly above the list price, but they're looking for a buyer who can surely close on the property. And with that, in my opinion, means that there's a better balance of power between buyers and sellers. Sellers know that they need buyers, they need qualified buyers, and they have to keep in mind that buyers have limitations. They're not gonna be able to offer their firstborn and everything under the sun to qualify. Buyers have to be more disciplined and restricted in their offerings, and sellers have to come to that understanding that although it is a seller's market, they've gotta approach it reasonably to find the buyer that's actually gonna be able to close on their property. Number three, removal of contingencies. As we've discussed, per the contract, you have three contingency periods or protection periods. You have your inspection investigation, you have your appraisal, and you have your loan contingencies. All are put into place to help protect your earnest deposit. Now, depending on where you're offering in Solano County, it's possible that you may have to consider some removal of contingencies, and it's possible that you may be able to retain all of them. So now more than ever, it's so important to work with a local agent who understands the different neighborhoods, the desirability of areas, how Vallejo operates differently than Fairfield and Vacaville. For example, I have a listing in Vallejo that received several offers 
many of the offers had some removed contingencies and a handful had all contingencies removed, which is somewhat unusual for Solano County. We often try to retain contingencies to help protect our buyers. Well, I noticed that a lot of out of area agents, a lot of agents from the South Bay or the East Bay were coming in and operating with the same method, which is a little more aggressive than our market is typically used to. So with that buyers, you are the one who's putting your earnest deposit on the line. So if your agent isn't familiar with how our county operates, you may be unnecessarily removing your protections and making your earnest deposit vulnerable. If you lose that deposit, that could could take you out of the running to purchase the house. So really important that you and your agent understand the specific neighborhoods. It may be a case by case basis if the house has some really unique features, but if you can retain your contingencies, absolutely do so. It might not even be necessary to remove any at all. Number four is marketing your house appropriately and not just banking on the fact that we have low inventory. As discussed, not all houses are selling quickly and not all houses are receiving multiple offers. Now more than ever, when buyers are scrutinizing properties, it's important to invest in marketing. And in tough markets like today, a lot of agents will try to scale back their spending because perhaps they're not having as much income coming in. But my opinion is that you need to do the polar opposite. You need to invest in marketing. You need to showcase the house with professional photography, drone footage, interior video, do the marketing, do the work so that your house stands out from the crowd, enticing the broadest audience possible and hopefully getting you multiple offers. And sellers, that means you have to put in the work as well. You really need to declutter a space. You need to make it neutral. You need to try to compete with how model homes are showcased. So light staging, or if the house is vacant, consider investing in full staging. It's important to do this again, because buyers are more particular. We're not dealing with the same market that we had two years ago. We really have to put our best foot forward in order to potentially get multiple offers. And I do believe that if you do the work, you will likely reap the benefits. Entering into today's market can be very intimidating for both buyers and sellers, but with the right support, the right local agent, you too can enjoy a lot of success in today's market. Please feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions or if you'd like to work together.